Hello everyone, my name is Evo and welcome to Cooking with the Koyas, where we share our recipes and our tips and techniques with you to help make your day in the kitchen that much better. And that's what we're going to do today because today folks we are going to make a fantastic sweet raisin and walnut bread which is to die for. Fantastic for toasting in the morning, overall flavor, amazing crust that you can't imagine. Let's get started. So I have, what I've done is I have pre-sifted, I sifted my own flour. I've got 400 grams here and I weighed it out. Now I like to sift my flour and 400 grams is equivalent to three cups. I weigh everything because weighing is much more accurate. But if you don't have a weigh scale, three cups of flour and I like to use unbleached white flour. And in this case, it's also the kind that is best for bread. Okay, but again, regular white flour is fine. So 400 grams or three cups. All I'm gonna add now is one quarter teaspoon of yeast, or one quarter teaspoon, <laughs> one quarter teaspoon of yeast. And I like to use the instant, um, instant yeast, instant yeast fast rise. The instant yeast is the best. And when you open this container, it's good for six months. I keep it in the refrigerator. Okay, next dry ingredient, salt. I have one teaspoon of salt. Even though we're making a sweet loaf of bread, raisin bread, uh, you still want some salt. You want that sweet and saltiness uh, flavor in there, mixed in there. So we're just going to add our one teaspoon of salt. And now we're going to also add one teaspoon of cinnamon. Cinnamon makes a phenomenal, adds a phenomenal flavor to your sweet raisin bread. So there is our one teaspoon of cinnamon in there. Another dry ingredient, I have one third cup of chopped up walnuts. In they go. And then I just like to give, it, give all those ingredients a stir and get them all mixed in around. These are all basically our dry ingredients. Okay, now uh, I have here 320 grams of milk. I like to use 0%. In other words, skim milk. I like to use skim milk. I pop it in the microwave for 30 seconds just to take the chill out. And you can use water. Um, but what I have found, and if you saw my video use making the artisan Italian style uh, bread, which I'll put a link here for you, you will notice that I used milk in there too. And the reason for the milk is makes for a better crust and a better crumb. Totally, totally different. And the, one of the keys to bread making is the milk. So again, I use 0% skim milk, 320 grams, or if you don't have a weigh scale, 320 milliliters. Milliliters and grams, same measurement. Okay, now we're gonna add one and a half tablespoons of honey. Okay, that is going to also add just a nice a little extra bit of sweetness to our sweet bread. So we got our one and a half tablespoons of honey. Last ingredient, of course, what it's all about, our raisins. Now what I've done, I have two thirds of a cup of raisins here and they've been soaking in water for about five minutes. I like to hydrate the raisins before I add them to my mix. That way it doesn't take the moisture away from our bread. And that's it. Those are the ingredients. So once you put all the ingredients in, all you have to do, just like our simple artisan recipe, is just mix everything together. It doesn't take long. It only takes about 15, 20 seconds. And once all the ingredients are incorporated, you're basically done, at least for now. So I like to just make sure and when you think you've got them all mixed together, just mix again a little bit more, just to make sure. So that's it. That's how easy that is. So that is the beginning of our dough. And what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna show you what this looks like. Scrape these edges down a bit. Oh boy, this is going to be an amazing, an amazing loaf of bread. I can't wait to show you. Okay, so. That's basically our dough you can see there. And uh, all we're gonna do now, very simply, I'm just gonna cover it with a 
little bit of plastic, plastic sheet over top. And then I'll take out one of my kitchen towels and I will put that over top. And now it sits. It sits for 12 to 14 hours. Now, if you can't manage that 12 to 14 hour window, you can go up to 16 hours and you'll still have a fantastic uh, loaf of bread, but you want at least 12 hours. You want at least that 12 hour slow rise with this, um, with this dough and you're going to see tomorrow. That's what it looks like today. I've already showed you. I will show you tomorrow what it looks like after 12 or 14 hours and we'll get ready for our next step. But right now it's just going to rest overnight. You can just leave it on the counter. You can put it in your oven, put it in the microwave if you want to tuck it away, but basically just on the countertop for 12 to 14 hours. That's it. So we're going to rest this. We'll come right back at you. I've let it go about 14 hours. Oh, and look at this, look at this rise here. It is all puffed up. It's filled in very, very nicely. And you can see it there, how it's risen beautifully overnight. A little bit of flour on the counter. And I like to use a spatula to help get the dough out of the bowl. And you try not to let it to tear you don't want the dough to tear out of there, so just kind of slowly work it and get it to fall out. Okay. Now this dough is going to be a bit sticky, which is perfectly fine. That's actually what you're going to want. Okay. So because it's sticky, a little bit of flour in the hands. Now we're going to do what we call a fourfold which basically you're going to take the one end of the dough again, which is sticky and just fold it over. Take the other end of the dough, fold it over, put some more flour on my hands. Take the side of the dough, fold it over. Take the other side of the dough, fold it over. You can fold it more if you like, but you need at least four folds. Okay. There's seven lucky number seven. Okay. Now, with this dough, I want to shape it. And in order to do that, what I like to do is just take the dough ball and pull it towards me. And if you do it on a drier surface, what happens is as you do that, the front of the dough ball kind of grabs the surface and it kind of starts to roll over and the ball starts to tighten up. So it's a very easy way to, uh, to shape your dough. And if your hands start to stick, just put a little uh, flour on them. There we go. Look at that. Isn't that nice? There we go. It's, it's now it's, it's about, it's, it's about, I'm going to say medium tight there. So we've got ourselves a nice round, uh, dough ball. Now, if you have a, uh, a forming basket, a proofing basket, that's great. Most home uh, bakers don't have those uh, specialty items. So I'm just going to use, um, a cutting board and I'm going to take some, oatmeal. This is just regular plain old oatmeal and I'm going to put oatmeal on my my cutting board and this is going to do two things. It's going to prevent the dough from sticking to the cutting board so I can remove it very easily when it's time to cook it but it's also going to add some really nice texture uh, to the bread. So I'm going to now take this dough just place it on top. There we go. Now I got to have a little bit of flour on the top because I'm going to cover this and I don't want, whoops, I don't want anything to, uh, to stick to the dough. So just a little bit of flour on top, like I say, just to prevent sticking. And now what we're going to do is cover it. So we're going to let it just rest for an hour, uh, for two hours, but we're going to preheat the oven before two hours. Uh, and I'll get to that step uh, in about an hour and a half. We're coming up to about an hour and a half, which means it's time to preheat the oven. And I have myself a Dutch oven here. You're going to need a pot with a lid that will uh, withstand going into the oven. And these Dutch ovens are fantastic. And as you can see, this one is very well seasoned. And I showed the inside when I made my regular loaf of bread. You could see that this one has been, has made quite a lot of loaves of bread. It's very well seasoned, but this Dutch oven is perfect for bread baking, but any, any, uh, pots with a lid that'll go in the oven will work just as well. 
So I am going to preheat the oven to 475 and the Dutch oven is going to go in empty with the lid on and that is going to preheat with the oven. You want that Dutch oven to be piping hot so you can preheat it longer than a half an hour if you want but at least a half hour preheat in the oven is perfect. Meanwhile our sweet bread is just resting nicely. We're going to give it another 30 minutes uh, once the two hours is up and then uh, and then put it in the oven and I'll show you how I do that. It's been our two hours. Time to take the Dutch oven out of the oven and let's take a look at our oh look at that. It's risen just ever so nicely. Uh, it's gonna make for a perfect perfect loaf of sweet bread. Okay that is piping hot so this is the part where you got to be oh just a little bit careful. You don't want to get burnt but that goes in. This comes off and watch how I plop this into the Dutch oven because of that oatmeal there. That's it. And it just goes right in nicely. I make sure it doesn't, I don't want it touching the edges. And then with a pair of scissors, because we don't have, most homemakers don't have a proper razor to slice their bread. Just with a pair of scissors, you gotta just go in about, about a half inch deep and just slice across the top. And I like to do just a, a simple X formation. That's it. Lid goes on. This now goes in the oven, back in the oven with the lid on for 30 minutes. Basically, it's going to be 30 minutes with the lid on and then normally I go a little longer when I'm baking regular bread with the lid off, but this time it's going to only be about five minutes with the lid off. So right now, it's going to do its thing. We'll come back in 30 minutes and take the lid off. 30 minutes is up. We're going to stop that and reset the timer for five more minutes. Perfect. Okay. So now it's time to take the lid off. And when you take the lid off, you're going to notice that the bread looks like it's actually done. But it's not quite, quite done yet. Although that one is looking, oh boy, that one's looking really good. So I don't want to give it too much longer. So I just took a look at that bread. Now every oven is different. The reason you leave the lid on for 30 minutes is you want to retain that humidity inside the Dutch oven, which is key for making a good loaf of bread. And then with the lid off, what happens now is the crust is just finishing to form and it's going to brown up very, very nicely. So having said that, every oven is different. So I had mentioned five minutes. I think I'm only going to let it go four minutes because it's already relatively dark for some reason. Uh, normally it's not quite that dark so um, with this particular oven I set it for 475 but it's a dial setting it's not electronic so you know it might have been at 480. So in this case I'm just going to let it go four minutes but what I would suggest when you're making yours maybe you can start looking at it again at four minutes and let it go until you have the color and the consistency that, that you want. So I just checked on it. I'm liking the color. We're going we're gonna to stop it and take it out right now. Oh yes. Look at this loaf of bread. Take a look at that loaf of bread. That is one gorgeous sweet raisin bread. And now remember with the oatmeal on the top, you could see how it's added some great texture to the top of our loaf. And that X that I cut with the scissors has also made for just a fantastic uh, texture to the top and adds a lot of character to this bread. Now, I like to let it cool on a cooling rack so it doesn't sweat down below. And you have to avoid cutting into it right away because the crust is still forming. So although you've got, you're tempted to cut it right away, I would wait about at least 15 minutes before you cut into this. But what I'm going to do, I just want to show you this particular, the inside of this bread and how it came. So I'm going to cut into it a little bit earlier, but first I got to snap a photo or two. So as your bread is resting, you'll actually hear the crust crackling a bit as it continues to develop. So, okay, like I said, I normally wouldn't cut into it this early, 
but I've got my photos and I really want to show you what the inside looks like. Uh, I'm just going to cut off just the end piece here. Look at this. Just look at the inside of that bread there. You can see some nice air pockets um, on the dough and you'll notice the, uh, you'll see the the raisins. Now the raisins I used were um, were white instead of red and that's perfectly fine. You could use any ones you want but that's a beautiful, beautiful. And then for toast, you know, I like to slice mine not too thick, not too thin, just like that. And you get yourself a nice, um, some fresh butter and you make yourself a beautiful, beautiful uh, loaf or a slice of toasted bread and you know, you can of course just eat it the way it is too. Oh. I'll tell you, the sweetness of the raisins, that little bit of honey, and then with the hint of the walnuts, it just makes for a phenomenal, phenomenal loaf of bread. You are going to absolutely love this sweet raisin walnut bread. You need to give it a try. When you do, come back to this video, drop me a line, and let me know how much uh, you enjoyed your loaf of bread. I'm sure going to enjoy this for sure. I think I'll actually go toast this right now, spread some nice butter on it, and have myself a beautiful toasted bread. And uh, wherever you're tuning in from today, I want to thank you for tuning in. And if you haven't yet, by all means, feel free to subscribe. We're going to continue sharing our recipes and uh, techniques and tips uh, all along the, along the way each and every week. Till next time, good luck and bon appetit. Wow. Beautiful.